Hello, let's go through all the questions for the second derivative test. So we know that there are two kinds of local min, or, or sorry, min-max problems that we will be asked to solve on the exam. There are local min-max problems and absolute min-max problems. Our general tool for solving absolute min-max problems uh, is our um, Lagrange multipliers, whereas for local min-maxes, we have to use uh, what we're going to work on in this video, which is the second derivative test. So we know that if we make a matrix out of the four second order partial derivatives uh, of our function f over here, if we have fxx, fxy, fyx, and fyy, we can uh, use some, some facts about this matrix to solve uh, for our local mins and maxes, and also saddle points. So we know that if we assign each of these um, a letter, A, B, C, D, our discriminant of our matrix is going to be AD minus BC. And if our discriminant is greater than 0, we can figure some stuff out. If fxx is greater than 0, we have a local min. And if fxx is less than 0, we have a local max. If our discriminant is less than 0, we have a saddle point. And if our discriminant is equal to 0, we don't know anything. And so we're going to use uh, exactly this right here to, to, to figure out all these questions. We also have to note that the only points that can be uh, that can be critical points, so candidates for uh, being tested by this matrix over here, are when both fx and fy are equal to 0. And usually the big hurdle with these questions is actually finding the values where fx and fy are both equal to 0. And this question uh, is, is no different. It's, it's a real pain. So we see that f is equal to e to the x, well, sorry, x squared e to the x plus y squared e to the x. And so our fx is going to be 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x plus y squared e to the x. And our fy will just be 2y e to the x. And moving on to our uh, second order partial uh, derivatives, we know that uh, fy, sorry, fy, let's see, fyx, in all these cases with all these problems, this will be equal to fxy. So whichever one of these looks easier to evaluate, uh, we, should, we should go with that. And since fy is so much smaller over here, we'll just do uh, fyx. And we see that fyx is equal to fxy, which is equal to uh, 2y e to the x. So if we go over here and start making our filling out spaces in our matrix, 2y, that's an e, 2y e to the x, and 2y e to the x are going to live right over there. So now we need our fxx, and this is the real, this, this one's terrible, 2 e to the x plus 2x e to the x plus 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x plus y squared e to the x. And thankfully, we can uh, mess with this a little bit and combine uh, one like term. And I'll move the rest of this over to match. So there we go. All that's left to find is fyy, which will just be 2 e to the x. So we have 2 e to the x here, and then I'm going to need to move, going to need to move the whole thing over to fit in our 2 e to the x plus 4x e to the x plus uh, yeah, y squared e to the x plus x squared e to the x. And I'll separate things out like that. Okay, so let's take a look at our fy and our fx and see what values uh, this will be equal to 0 for. Well, looking at fy, 
uh, there is no value of x which on its own will make this thing uh, equal equal to zero um, because you know we could set x equal to zero and that will just give us uh, uh, two two y because either the x will will go to one and so we see that y has to be equal to zero and this is a great hint because we see every single answer choice we have here is only mentioning uh, two possible values so that that's a really really good way to to uh, to try to figure out whether you found all the points or not, look and see if all of the answer choices are, you know, mentioning the same number of points. So, what if y is telling us is that y must be equal to zero for any of our critical points. And uh, the minute we see that, uh, we can go up to our fx and figure some stuff out. So, y must be equal to zero, so this whole term is going to be equal to zero no matter what. And so we can write fx as 2x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. Let's factor out an e to the x, and we'll have e to the x multiplied by 2x plus x squared. And uh, I don't know, let's also factor out, oops, let's also factor out an x. And we see that this will work. Uh, hmm, this will work for x is equal to zero. Oh, I'm kind of it's kind of confusing. This will work for x is equal to zero uh, because we've got our x out here that's getting multiplied into everything, and this will also work for x is equal to negative two, right? Because that will make this section uh, zero. So overall, it seems like our two points are zero, zero, and zero, negative two. And let's just confirm that looking up here. So 0, 0, yes, that'll work for fx, and that'll work for fy. And then, oh, and by 0, negative 2, I mean uh, negative 2, 0. Oh, good, good catch me. Um, negative 2, that's going to give us negative 4 plus 4. Yeah, okay, that, that will work. So now that we have our two points here, all we have to do is <laughs> go, over, go over to our matrix that we set up already over here, and I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, we don't really need it. And we'll test these points. So 0, 0 is going to be the easier one to test. Uh, this term, this term, this term, this term, and this term are all going to be equal to 0, and we're going to be left with uh, our, our matrix is going to have uh, this guy and this guy in it as positive terms. So we'll have 0, 0, 2, 2. So uh, remembering our rules, if our discriminant is positive, uh, where here our discriminant is equal to 4. If our discriminant is positive and fxx is greater than 0, we have a min at 0, 0. So moving on to negative 2, comma, 0. Uh, any term with, let's see if I can get all my underlines out of the, out of the way, um, and I'm going to have to make the size smaller. There we go. So any term with a uh, y outside of it is going to be equal to 0, so that guy's out of there. Uh, I liked my underlining better. That guy's out of there. This guy and this guy are all out. So up top, let's see what we're going to get. We're going to get, uh, and I, I really wish, okay, we'll go down here. We're going to get uh, 2 e to the negative 2 uh, hmm, minus 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 8 e to the negative 2 uh, plus 4 e to the negative 2. So all of this for the a value of our matrix is going to simplify down to negative 2 e to the negative 2. And then the only other non-zero value, because both of these are going to work out to 0, is going to be 2 e to the negative 2. And we see because this discriminant will be negative, we're multiplying a negative number by a positive number, and we have zeros here, our discriminant is negative, and so this will be a saddle point. And so our answer is a local minimum and a saddle point. Okay, giving this question over here a little bit of breathing room, uh, we are doing the same thing, but we've got a much nicer expression to deal with. So let's just go. Let's find fx. This will be 6x squared plus 6y, whereas fy is going to be 6x plus 6y. 
f y x and x y is going to be equal to six and f x x is 12 x and f y y is six. So we know that our matrix, once we figure out what points we're dealing with, our matrix is going to be 12 x, six, six, six. It might be a might be a sign six six six. And now the Purdue math department might have uh, put that one in there for us. So uh, let's take a look at these things up here, our f x and f y, and see what we can do with them. Six x squared plus six y has to be equal to zero, and six x plus six y also has to be equal to zero. Okay, we can solve this thing down here and see that y has to be equal to negative x. Uh, so that's that's a good relation to know. And up here, hmm, uh, we can divide everybody by 6, and we'll get, and uh, move that over, and x squared equals negative y. Now, let's see. What, what values will both of these things work for? I'll move this negative over. Y, negative. There we go. Okay, uh, well, if both are zero, that's gonna work. So zero, zero is a point. And taking a look at our answers, it looks like we're only searching for two points. So that's good to know, that's coming in handy, because otherwise, if this was a short answer test, this would be make this kind of thing much harder because you could go searching on and on with your extra time having already you know, found all of the points. Uh, it looks like this will also work for one negative one, right? Because you get rid of these silly things. Um, one negative one, this will give us six minus six, and this will give us yep, six minus six. So it looks like one negative one is our, is our other point. So moving down to our matrix, we see that uh, our, our, our answer, like what, what our point is, is only dependent on x, because we only have that one variable here. So when x is equal to 0, in our first, in our first example, um, this thing is going to be a saddle point, because we are going to get a discriminant of negative 36. So saddle point. And then for 1, negative 1, we are going to get a positive discriminant with a positive fxx, and that will be, sorry, a min. So we get one local minimum and one saddle point. Let's find the point xy for which f has a local minimum. We're going to need an fx, an fy, an fyx, an fxy, an fyy, and an fxx. <laughs> it's kind of sad when you write it all out like that, but let's uh, let's just go and find these things. So fx, we're treating all of our uh, y's as constant, so we're going to get 2x plus 4y minus 2, and for fy, we will get y squared plus 4x minus 2. 13, uh, and then it gets a little easier for here, from here because fyx is just going to be 4, fxy will be 4, fyy is 2y, and fxx is 2. So our matrix, once we figure everything out, is going to be 2, 2y, 4, 4. So just like the uh, previous problem, we're only dependent on one variable, which is going to make solving this matrix uh, a walk in the park. So given these relations here uh, with fx and fy, we should be able to figure out some system of equations. Uh, well, we should be able to solve this system of equations uh, in order to figure things out. So we can rearrange fx and say that uh, 2x is equal to 2 minus 4y, or x is 1 minus 2y, which we can then plug in for our x's down here. We will see that y squared plus 4 minus 8y minus 13 is equal to 0, or y squared 
minus 8y uh, minus 9 is equal to 0. And this will factor to y minus, uh, let's see, y minus 9, y plus 1 is equal to 0. So our two roots for y, for which uh, both of these are equal to 0, are y equals 9 and y equals negative 1. Okay, so uh, we actually don't need to do any more solving of anything because given this, we know that we're looking for a solution to this, to this y in this matrix that will uh, make our discriminant positive. And in order for our discriminant to be positive, a times d must be greater than 16 because we're subtracting 16 over here. And the only way for that to be true is if y is equal to 9. And we can go through and uh, find that this 9 corresponds to negative 17 for x, and that's actually no problem at all because we see that x is equal to 1 minus 2y. Well, in this case, y is 9, so uh, 1 minus 18 is negative 17, and d is our answer. Let's classify the critical points of this. Uh, th this this whole thing. We don't actually know what g of x, y is. And uh, I really wish they did every question like this because frankly, um, the only way to really, to, to, screw, to screw this kind of thing up is if you don't know the material. If you know the rules and you know how to use the matrix, uh, you're good. It's just the problems that try to trick you up, trip you up, trick you up isn't the phrase, trip you up along the way with the algebra that gets a little little annoying here. So we can set up we can set up our two uh, our, our matrices. Uh, first let's do that do it for two two. See they're giving us they're giving us two lines for uh, two different points and they're asking us to classify them. And we we see that uh, gx and gy for both of them are equal to zero. So that's good. That means that they are critical points. So they can be local maxes, local mins, or, or uh, saddle points. But we have to check. So let's form our matrix for uh, g uh, at 2, 2. That matrix is going to look like negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1. And this is going to give us a discriminant greater than 0 with a negative fxx, so we have a local maximum. So a, b, and c are on the right track. Then for g of negative 3, 0, our matrix, our matrix will be 0, negative 6, negative 3, negative 3. This will give us a discriminant of uh, less than 0. In fact, it will be negative 9. And so we have a saddle point. Oh, sorry. B says minimum. I can't, I can't read. And so we have a saddle point at negative 3, 0, and A is our correct answer. OK, let's figure out how many critical points this function has. We know that our critical points will exist when fx and fy are equal to 0. And I'm not sure why I drew a g. So fx is going to be 6y squared minus 6x squared. Our fy will be 12xy minus 12y cubed. And we need both of these to be equal to 0 at all times. So we can do some factoring, which will help us out a lot. We will see that 6. Uh, y minus x, y plus x is equal to 0, just factoring out a 6 and then factoring our y squared minus x squared over there. And then for uh, this guy, we can factor out a 12y, and we will see that x minus y squared has to be equal to 0. We can divide out this 6 and this 12y, and 0 divided by both of those is still going to be 0. Now we have these things. So we see that y is equal to plus or minus x uh, by just uh, you know solving, looking at these roots over here. And we see that uh, y is equal to plus, <laughs> plus or minus x. Uh, from this guy too, but let's make sure uh, uh, let's make sure and figure out what points actually satisfy this. So at zero zero, this will work. 
Um, and I wish there was some better way to find these points, but they they're they're kind of sort of kind of sort of isn't. You you really have to kind of fish around and think about it. Um, zero zero will work though, and you can see that just by plugging them in here. So we know that none isn't correct. Let's see. Uh, what about um, okay? And then, and another thing to note: whenever we're given, uh, whenever you you get something like this, it's always good to go through the whole one 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 negative one negative one one negative one negative one uh, uh, cycle to see if we get see if we get anything good. So if if we're looking at one one this guy is going to be equal to zero, and this guy will also be equal to zero. So one, one are points uh, that work. So we know that the answer is not one. What about one, what about one negative one? Uh, one negative one, that will work for our first one, and that will work for our second one. So there, there we go, we have found a third point. What about negative one, one, negative one, one? That's going to give us, uh, well, it, it will work for this first one. And will it work for our second one, negative one, minus one? Nope, it will not work for our second one. So this one, this guy's out. And finally, negative one, negative one, uh, will it work for our first relation? Um, it looks like it will. We will get negative 1 plus 1. So yes, it will work there. But will it work here? We will get negative 1 minus 1. It will not work. So we just get these three points. And I mean, you can you can fish around and try to find some more points. And if this was a real exam, this would definitely be one that I would go back to to see if I could find any more that I had missed. Because choosing three when more than three is just kind of sitting there taunting you is a little scary. But in the end, this is correct. And there, these are our only three uh, points that will work. And OK, we have two questions left. And are they? Yes. OK, so this, this applies for both of them f of x, y is equal to this guy here. So uh, let's find things. f, x will be 6, x, y. f, y will be 3, y squared minus 3 plus 3, x squared. And we got to figure out where these guys are both equal to 0. Well, taking a look at our first one, our f, x, 0, 0, seems like it'll work. But if we go down and look at uh, f y, you know, we will get negative 3, which is, which is no good. So uh, I prefer, instead of just plugging things in directly, you, you can often factor or mess around with these things to, to see things a little more clearly. So if we set 6 x y equal to 0, we know that we can just divide the 6 out, and this relation is still true. So that's about as uh, basic a relation as we're going to get out of it. So we're good with that. This must be true. Then uh, let's divide everything by 3 and plop our fy up here. So we have y squared minus 1 plus x squared is equal to 0. We can move this, we can move this 1 over. And there's, there's a nice little, little, uh, little relation here. And that's going to be you know, our circle of radius 1. And so if we, it actually helps, we can graph this out. If that's our circle of radius 1, where are the points on our circle of radius 1 where uh, the, our x and y components multiplied together give us 0? And we've got a little extra hint that every answer choice is talking about four different points. In fact, uh, this can only be true when one or more of our points is 0. And that will occur at 1, 1, <laughs> sorry, that's not 1, 1. That is uh, 1, oh no, oh no, it's, everything's falling apart. This is 1, 0, this guy is 0, 1, this is negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. So those are our four critical points. We've confirmed that over here. And so now all we have to do is make our matrix and figure out what in the world is 
going on with that. So fxx is going to be 6y. fyx and fxy are going to be 6x each. And fyy is going to be 6y. And so let's go through our points. If we have 1, 0 over here, excuse me, we are going to get a negative discriminant. So that's going to be a saddle. So currently we have one saddle point. Uh, so these are the two, these are the three answer choices we have left. And this guy is dealt with. What about 0, 1? Well, at 0, 1, we're going to have a local minimum because we'll have a positive discriminant and a positive fxx. So that gives us a local minimum. Minimum, local minimum, local minimum. Okay, uh, so I should, really, really circling this doesn't make any sense because we have numbers outside there. So we have a min and a saddle so far. So moving around our, our circle, uh, clock counterclockwise. Uh, still, we have negative one zero. That's going to give us a negative discriminant with, uh, yeah, a, neg a negative discriminant. We don't have any other conditions on that. So that's another saddle point. And then finally, uh, looking down here at zero, negative one, that will give us a local max because we'll, we will have a positive discriminant with a negative fxx. So there we go. So we're looking for two saddles, one local max, one local min, and we're done. OK, so they're telling us that 0, 1, and uh, we can rephrase this as root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, are critical points for this function. Let's make sure this is the same. No, this isn't. Okay, I confuse myself by having an eight and a nine in a having an eight and a nine in a row, uh, but they're they're different eights and nines that they're talking about up here. So we're meant to classify these things. It's nice when they give us the critical points. I wish they'd do that every time. So no point in finding our f x and f y because uh, we've already uh, we've already dealt with that. So let's see if we can. In, uh, we, if we can integrate twice in, in, in one go and just jump straight to f x x. Well, anything with a y in it is already out. And anything with only uh, one x with, with x with an order of one in it is going to uh, go to zero after two uh, differentiations. So we are going to be left with, let's see, this will be 6x squared. So 12x minus... 6y. Our fyy, uh, well, see here, we will differentiate this with respect to y once, and then it'll just be seen as a constant, and it will disappear. So our only uh, value for fyy is going to be negative 6y. fyx and fxy in, in a similar way. Oh, I kind of, we should we should uh, no, we don't. We don't actually have to draw this out because our our only uh, the only thing that we can integrate with respect to x and then y or y and then x without it disappearing is going to be this middle thing, and we are going to be left with negative six x. So we can make our matrix twelve x minus six y, negative six y, negative six x, negative six x, and we have to classify zero one and root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. OK, so 0, 1, that's going to give us a negative fxx, but it's also going to give us a positive discriminant. We're going to be left with negative 6, negative 6, 0, 0. So that means we have a relative maximum at this point p, the point p they're, they're calling uh, 0, 1. And then I really don't want to deal with square root of two over twos. And a cool little trick you can do here is it doesn't, because we're just multiplying these by, by things, it doesn't matter what values we're using as long as they're the same. So let's use one and one, even though uh, we have to keep in mind that isn't, a, that isn't actually a critical point. It's just making 
uh, the math a little easy because it's it's late and, and and we're all we're all tired. So at one one we are going to get uh, six for f x x negative six negative six negative six. That will give us a very negative um, a, a very a very negative uh, discriminant, which will give us a saddle point at Q. And so B is our correct answer. Okay, hopefully this was uh, interesting. I know it's not. Uh, this, especially this kind of thing, is uh, is no fun at all. But it's something we have to deal with to get to the to the more exciting things in the exams. Hope this was helpful.